Hello, this is Alan Brooks, and welcome to another New Discovery Teaching. Today, I'm going to be talking about something I've seen taught over and over again. It's such a false teaching, it really bothers me, and it just illustrates how delusional and sad people can be. I mean, they're well-meaning Christians who believe this particular doctrine. I'm not going to call it heresy, although it almost is. It borderlines on it, because I hate these people who are heresy hunters, who ignore people who get millions saved, and they say, aha, you said this some, something to this person who's your cousin's friend, and you're a heretic, a run from that person. You know, I'm not like that. I don't, I'm not into heresy hunting. But I've seen this taught over and over again, and I just go, you know, how do people believe what I'm about to share with you? This is one of the most weirdest, oddest doctrines I've ever heard in my life. It's totally, people have to erase scriptures and come up with all sorts of strange things to believe it. And they do, and it's just like, once they believe it, it's over. They don't want to hear the truth of what I'm going to share with you today, of how there's a false doctrine that people are being taught every single day, and they spew it forth every single day. Good, well-meaning Christians. And what's more, it doesn't make sense based on the scriptures they uh, show us it's based on. So, what are you talking about, Alan? Well, I'm talking about Daniel 9, 26 and 27. In Daniel 9, we hear about the 77's prophecy, which is, the angel tells Daniel there's going to be 70 periods of seven years before the kingdom of God comes to earth. But after 69 of those sevens, the Messiah will be cut off, and uh, then we'll have one final seven years before uh, the kingdom of God comes to earth. And we've all heard about that all of our lives, the seven-year tribulation, quote-unquote. So, you know, why am I so upset? Why are you so upset, Alan? Well, I'm just going to read the scriptures from you. In Daniel 9, 26 and 27, it says, Daniel 9, 26, And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Okay, what an amazing prophecy. There, this, this was predicted that Jesus would be cut off after 69 of those seven weeks. It says in the scripture above it, let me just go there real quick, Daniel 9, 25, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command, to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks, or that sixty-nine weeks of years that I told you about. The street shall be built again in the wall, and even in troublesome times. Well, most experts that I've read say this is talking about Cyrus the Great from Isaiah 45. He issued a command to rebuild Jerusalem. And, you know, I'm not a mathematician, but all those mathematicians have gotten together and done their calculus, and they've, they've figured out that, yes, from this command, a certain command in the past, I don't want to go into every single detail here, I'm just trying to give you an overall view of what people believe, that after that 69 uh, weeks, or the six, uh, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks, it says here, uh, 69 weeks, that the Messiah will be cut off. And it says that in Daniel 9.26. After the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. Well, people have figured out that to the day from this prophecy, Jesus was indeed cut off. And I, he was crucified for all of us, which is not for himself. It's one of the most amazing proof texts in the Bible. It's not talked about that much, but it proves that Jesus' mission was come to give himself, not for himself, but for us to be killed or cut off. When will he be cut off? Well, it says there, after the 62 weeks, or the 62 plus 7, or the 69th week, he'll be cut off, but not for himself. Okay, Jesus was crucified. It was after those 69 weeks. And I'm just going to keep reading. And then it switches, I believe, to the end of time, because it says, And the people of the prince who was to come, Daniel 9, 26, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Now, that's not the Messiah. That's the people of the prince who is to come, which, as I've studied the Old Testament for 30 years, that's the Antichrist. You see, the Bible presents a picture at the end of time where an Antichrist, probably a Muslim from northern areas of north of Israel, will sweep down and invade Sunni states. He'll be a Shia Muslim. He'll want to establish a caliphate. And then he'll come in to Israel, and he'll invade a peaceful Israel, and he'll come into the sanctuary, and 
do something called the abomination of desolation, which Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24. He goes, when you see this Antichrist in the temple stopping a sacrifice, which is the abomination of desolation, or the act of the Antichrist proclaiming himself God in a temple that causes the desolation of Israel, you know, Israel flee out of town. Now, why flee? Because it's a Muslim army. The Muslims hate the Jews, right? So anyway, here it's talking about, uh, first of all, you know, after 62 weeks, or after that 69 weeks, which is 62 plus 7, uh, the Messiah will be cut off, and he was. And then it says it shifts gears, and the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's the Antichrist. That's not Jesus. Then the end shall be with a flood. That's the end of time. That's not 2,000 years ago when Jesus was crucified. And till the end of the war, desolations are determined. That's what war? You know, the end of all time. Maybe Armageddon is maybe what that means. And then Daniel 9.27 shifts over to the Antichrist again. It goes, Then he, the Antichrist, or the people of the prince who will come, who will destroy the city and the sanctuary, shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Now, here's where the weird part gets. People ignore all these scriptures just above that and say, that's Jesus. Jesus confirmed the covenant with one week. But in the middle, it says, in the middle of that last seven-year time frame, known as the tribulation, but these people have a different take on it, that in the middle of that week, he'll bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And you see, their take is that Jesus is the one who stopped the sacrifice here in the middle of some covenant he made. Well, first of all, you know, above the, the scriptures right above this are talking about the Antichrist. He's the one who is a prince who will destroy the city and the sanctuary. Jesus is not going to do that. That's point one. Point two is, as far as I know, verse 27, Jesus never made a covenant for a seven-year period. But here's their logic. It, it says in the middle of the week, he'll bring it into sacrifice and offering. So, they say, okay, it's one seven-year period, and this is three and a half years. Aha! You know, Jesus ministered for three and a half years. Light bulb time over your head. Hmm, we're really smart. Jesus ministered for three and a half years. Here, this person makes a covenant for three and a half years, and he brings an end to sacrifice and offering. Hmm, let's just make the connection that Jesus brought it into the sacrifice and offering by his sacrifice on the cross. He ministered for three and a half years. So we're going to ignore the real context of this. We're going to say that was Jesus. And you see, and then the next verse, it says, And on a wing of abominations, there shall be one who makes desolate, even unto the consummation which is determined and poured out on the desolate. That's, that's really horrible. The in, in New King James Version would have a version like that. What do you mean by that, Alan? Why would you dare criticize a scripture? Well, what I mean by that is I've intensively studied the Old Testament, and in about seven or eight places it talks about this event, the abomination of desolation. In, it, in most of those places it talks about the Antichrist coming into the temple and doing what? He stops the sacrifice or the renewed sacrifices that the Jews are already planning to do. So then... You see where these people get off track, which I don't get how they get there. Well, I mean, I see it in a way. They say that Jesus confirmed a covenant by his sacrifice, but in the middle of the week he brought it into the sacrifice and offering, so that's Jesus. But then they ignore all the scriptures before and after that. And the King James here is so odd that it gives them cover to do so because it makes it look like it has nothing to do with all these other scriptures that talk about the, the abomination of desolation. But if you read, like I said, in, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation, uh, it's the end of time. It's not 2,000 years ago. And let me read from the NIV. It's a little clearer. After, and here's verse 26 in the NIV. After the 62 sevens, or that, remember, the seven years plus the 62, which is the 69 years, the anointed one will be put to death and have nothing. Well, you know, Jesus was crucified after that 69 weeks. And here's another point real quick to interject. If it was in the middle of the week that Jesus stopped the sacrifice and it was him who ministered for three and a half years, you're violating what the scripture says. The, vi the scripture does not say after 69 weeks plus three and a half or half a week, does it? No, it doesn't. 
it says a point of fact after the 69 weeks, or after the 62 sevens plus the seven. You see what I'm saying? So they have to perform gymnastics, which is why I call such people the twister pretzel makers. They take some dough, stretch it all over the place while making the game of Twister. I mean, they're God bless their hearts. They're good, well-meaning people. But it just shows you once people get stuck with an idea, man, they're, they're guarding it to the death. It doesn't matter what the facts are. So anyway, getting back to the NIV, it says the anointed one will be put to death, verse 26. Then it says the people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. That's a lot like what we read in the New King James Version. Then it says the end will come like a flood. War will continue until the end, and desolations have been decreed. Again, that's a symbol. Wars will happen to the end, Jesus said, and it's the abomination of desolation which the Antichrist does. And then verse 27, he will confirm it in a covenant for one seven. Who's he? He's the, the he is the people of the ruler who will come, who will destroy the city. It's not the he who was cut off. I mean, you're having to, you know, do what you call at the Olympics, you know, a pole vault over that scripture to get to your interpretation. It, instead of being hermeneutics like, you know, we should be doing, hermeneutics is placing things in their proper context. This is more like Herman Munster nudics. Okay? Anyway, continuing on, it says, Verse 27, he'll confirm a covenant with many for one seven, which we know the Antichrist will do. Not Je- Jesus never confirmed a covenant for seven years, did he? In the middle of that seven-year period, he'll put an end to sacrifice and offering, which we know the Antichrist is supposed to do. He's supposed to come into the temple and stop the sacrifice. That's his job, it says in several places. And it says, and then in the, at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation. Until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. So let me ask you, people. Jesus isn't going to set up an abomination that causes desolation, and there's no end of creed poured out on him, is there? No, all this is the same he. It's the Antichrist. The Antichrist makes a seven-year peace treaty. The Antichrist uh, stops the sacrifices. The Antichrist sets up the abomination, which I wrote Zondervan, and I told him, you know, there's five or six places that talk about the abomination that causes desolation, but your odd translation of Daniel 9.27, you know, the abomination of spreading mayonnaise, I don't know, it's some weird thing that doesn't make any sense. It should be translated exactly like this. He'll set up an abomination that causes desolation, which is just what Jesus said. Jesus said, you know, the end times will start when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. And here the prophet Daniel speaks of the abomination of desolation. And so, again, all this is antichrist-centered or antichrist-centric. It has nothing to do with Jesus. You know, it's just the prophecy is basically, the overall view is, there's going to be 70 sevens until the kingdom of God comes to earth. But after 69 of those sevens, Daniel, the anti, the, the Lord Jesus, well, the anointed one, will be put to death. He won't have anything, but not for himself, as the New King James Version says. And then the angel shifts to the end of time. It says, the people of the ruler who will come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end will come like a flood. Wars will continue until the end and desolations have been decreed. Now, That's the Antichrist, the end of time. And then he, the same he of the people who will, this ruler who will will destroy the city of the sanctuary, that he will confirm a covenant for one seven-year period, which is referred to many times in the Old Testament when people say, peace, peace, it's beware. You know, it says in Isaiah 28, you know, Israel, you made a covenant with death. The Antichrist is death. And in... And then also it says here on, at the temple, the same he sets up the abomination until the decree is poured out on him. So the overall picture of the Bible is just this, that there's one final seven-year peace treaty, and the Antichrist sweeps through the Middle East and invades Israel to start this last three and a half year periods of time. He rules for three and a half years. He sets up the abomination. He stops the sacrifice. It says that in a couple of places in Daniel. The Antichrist stops the sacrifice. So where does it say the Antichrist stops the sacrifice, Alan? You're just trying to Jedi mind trick me or confuse me. I know it was Jesus who stopped the sacrifice. And I'll ignore all the scriptures around Daniel 9.27 to have my theory. Well, you're welcome to be that way. 
But let's go to a scripture that's my coup de gras. It's the stake in the vampire's heart of this odd doctrine. Daniel 9, uh, Daniel 12, he's conversing with the angel. He's going, yo, angel, when is the kingdom of God coming to earth? And he goes, you know, go your way, Daniel, in nine, uh, verse 9 of uh, Daniel 12. You know, there's lots of stuff that's going to happen. Verse 11, but he goes, from the time the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to 1,335 days. But, verse 13, but you go your way till the end. Okay, again, all throughout Daniel 9, we saw how it was the end. We saw how it was the abomination. And how it's the Antichrist, the he of the prince of the city, who will the people who will come who will destroy the city, which is what the Bible predicts, that the Antichrist armies will destroy the city. It says that in Daniel 11.31, it goes, His armed forces set up the abomination of desolation. And here in Daniel 12.11, it goes, From the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, they'll, and the abomination is set up, you see, it's the same event. This makes it crystal clear that it wasn't Jesus who took away the daily sacrifice long ago. And it says, From the time the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be basically three and a half years plus a little bit of time. Blessed is he who makes it all the way to the end of that, which makes sense because, you see, one of the urban legends in the church is there's the final seven-year tribulation. That's a lie. There isn't one. There's a final seven-year peace treaty. And then in the middle, there's a, the Antichrist stop, breaks the peace, stops the sacrifices, and sets up the abomination. That's exactly what the scripture says. So this scripture proves that theory completely wrong. Now, will these people admit it? I doubt it. They're going to hold on to that theory like Charlton Heston holding on to his gu guns. They won't let it be pried loose from their cold, dead hands. I know it. But it's darn clear, Dan, uh, Daniel 12, 11, From the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. And, you know, it's just clear. There's no way around it. And then, again, getting back to Daniel 9, 27, it goes, He will confirm in a covenant with one, one seven-year period, Daniel 9.27, but in the middle of that seven-year period, he'll put an end to sacrifice and offering, and at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is poured out upon him. That's not Jesus, people. You know, you see what I'm saying? I don't understand. Somebody has to take a pole vault and, and jump over all these texts to have their, you know, gee, light bulb moment that Jesus ministered for three and a half years and Jesus stopped the sacrifice. Well, I hate to break it for you, but I don't think the sacrifice has stopped until 70 AD, which wasn't 33 AD when Jesus Christ died. So again, that's another little inconvenient fact. So anyway, I love these people. I just don't get it. But it just shows you what the devil can do. You know, these are good, well-meaning people who believe this. But, you know, the devil can take an inch and make it a mile. And you, you see how you have to go ignore scriptures, erase scriptures, to have this light bulb moment that Jesus ministered for three and a half years, and Jesus stopped the sacrifice by his sacrifice. But, you know, again, Jesus, A, did not make a seven-year covenant. B, he did not stop the sacrifices. They continued on. And again, the NIV makes it clear that when the guy stops the sacrifice, the he or the he of the people of the prince who will come, the guy who will destroy the city and the sanctuary, certainly Jesus isn't going to destroy any city and sanctuary. But we know the Antichrist will. That he will confirm this covenant. That he will stop the sacrifice. And that he will set up the abomination. Just like we saw in Daniel 12, 11. Now, could it be any more clear? You know, I, I can't see how. But again, you know, it's up to you people. I'm just trying to say this really upset me. I've seen it taught over and over again, and these people are so devout about this. I'm going, why are they so devout? Why are they erasing scriptures and doing backflips to have this belief system? I don't see it. It's not important, but they do. So anyway, this is Alan Brooks signing off for another New Discovery teaching, why Daniel 9.27 is not Jesus, it is the Antichrist. 
and he will stop the sacrifices, he will set up the abomination, and he will bring the end of the world about, as Daniel 12, 11 said. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, email me at abrook8, no S, number 8. I'll be glad to answer anything.